Well, I, I've been approached before um, because uh, even though I was a John Doe in this uh, case, it, you know, Hollywood's very small, and uh, especially when you work on shows with people, you become sort of like a family, and uh, people talk, and so I, I had been approached by another documentary uh, years ago, and I just was not in a place where I wanted to talk about this or put it out into the world or anything. And, um, so I expressed that, and, and the response was unbelievable. I mean, they wrote back to me saying that, you know, because of people like you, there's going to be more children hurt in the industry. And it's, uh, you know, you need, you, you, you need to speak out, otherwise this is going to continue. It was just, I was like, did you really just send that to me like that? I'd be like, yeah. I was just shocked. So when Emma reached out, I was very on guard. I was going, you know, I don't, you know, I know how this goes. I've been there. And, um, and so I was like, but I, I don't know what, because I was totally going to ignore it. Um, but I, I don't know what was, if it was where I was at mentally at the time, and um, I was struggling a lot at, at that point in my life, and I don't know, I just started responding, and then I would go dark and ghost you for a while. Quite a while, many times. <laughs> and, and then there was, a, there was finally one point where uh, you would ask me, um, look, let's just be off the record, like, can we just meet so I can kind of, you know, you can put a face to these text messages and maybe you'll feel comfortable and you don't have to, you can tell me what you want to talk, tell me about or we can move forward with this or we don't or maybe I can just be an ear that can listen or whatever because you could tell, I think she could tell that I was like, I don't want to do this. All right. Um, so, do you know about this part of the story? <laughs> like, you know, so I kept like going back and forth on that, and then Emma came out to LA, and I was. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what you were looking at on the other side of that table, but I'm sure it was not a pretty picture. Um, and it was the first time that I really spoken about this to uh, to a stranger. So it's not my family or people I worked with who are close to me who had supported me throughout the years. Um, and I just kind of opened up and was like, this is what's going on and this is a huge issue. And, and my biggest concern here is that, you know, like, like Emma said, is you have two, two, two people working on the same show within the matter of months getting arrested for unspeakable and horrific things. I mean, if I was a reporter, I'd be frothing at the mouth for that story and to illuminate it and, and put it everywhere. But I mean, there were years that I would go and, and Google and be like, I wonder who's written about this story. And it's just nowhere. You couldn't find anything on Ryan. You couldn't find, I mean, there was more stuff about um, Jason and articles about that, but you couldn't find anything on Brian. There was like one Daily Mail article like five years ago. Um, and I just was, I was so perplexed by that. And I'm like, you know, this is the response that I feel should have happened so many years ago is the reaction that, you know, Emma and Mary and everybody from the documentary is having is going, why? we have to tell the world about this and this needs to change because like I said, I was like, Emma, you know, he went on to work like no problem. I mean, he's producing, executive producing movies with children in them. He's working on the Disney Channel. He's moving around. He, right after he was arrested, he left to go work on a film in Arizona before he was sentenced and went and worked on a film in Arizona like it was nothing and then came back, got sentenced and as soon as he got sentenced, he got a bunch of letters from People saying, you know, I would be more than happy to recommend him. I would be more than happy to attach my name to that recommendation. I would be more than happy to hire him to work around children. That's how comfortable I feel with him. 
And that, I think, was something that was a catalyst for this for me because the entire time I've been moving through my life, I thought, okay, there's bad actors in Hollywood. Well, obviously there's bad actors in Hollywood. <laughs> there's, there's people in Hollywood you need to watch out for. But that's in uh, karate practice, soccer practice, you go to your, your job, it, I mean, any institution, school, it, there's people you gotta watch out for. And that's what I thought. But then when she was able to um, tell me that she got the letters unsealed and that I would be able to read them, that's what really just hit me in, in my heart. Because the day that we went to his sentencing, I walked in and I was imagining it was gonna be an empty courtroom. I'm a John Doe, they're gonna keep this quiet. We're just gonna get through this sentencing today. And it's okay, whatever. So I walk in with my mom, my stepdad, my brother, and his entire side of the court was full of actors and producers and writers and he's just it, it, young and old and minors and young actors and peers of mine and people I'd grown up watching. Um, and I, I was just blown away, but I didn't know the extent of the support until I saw the, the letters. And Emma, Emma was really sensitive with giving me the letters. She was, I was like, I was like, just read them to me, just, just read them to me on the phone. She's like, no, I need to like, I need to deliver these to you in person and sit down and go through them with you because. You did make me read some of them. Did, oh, did, did I? Did I? <laughs> yeah. well, well, what really hit me was there was one day I was in my backyard, you called me and you said, okay, I have the letters. Can I go through some of these names with you? And some of the names you were coming up with, I was like, yeah, okay, I know they wrote a letter. I didn't know what the letter contained, but I knew that, I know that person wrote a letter. Okay, that doesn't surprise me, that doesn't surprise me. And then she started getting to names that I was going, whoa, 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 whoa wait, what? And she goes, yeah, do you know this name and this name? And I just went, no, please tell me they didn't write letters, please. This person was my favorite director that I worked with, like my favorite, I requested him on Drake and Josh, and this was written prior to working on Drake and Josh, and I'm going, wait, he wrote a letter? And, and this person who I, I ended up working with on Drake and Josh every day for four years, and was basically like my boss that I had to answer to, like, she wrote a letter? Like, this, and then it just started blowing my mind, and it, it showed me that there was way more to this than just these certain people you have to watch out for, right. that it's like a whole, group of, 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 it's a whole, con everyone's connected and supporting and helping and rehiring. And, and so that's when it's, it started to snowball into, all right, this story needs to get out because this is really, this is a much bigger issue than I ever imagined.